السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We always commence by praising the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sending blessings and salutations upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was sent to us to remove us from the darkness to the light. We ask Allah to bless his family, his entire household, all his companions, and we ask the Almighty to bless every single one of us and to grant us goodness. Beloved brothers and sisters, a beautiful afternoon in the city of Kuala Lumpur at this blessed university, and a blessed gathering, mashallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and to create ease in our lives. Every one of us seated here may have different issues, difficulties we are going through, perhaps sicknesses. We may have suffered some form of loss. Remember, we pray for every single one. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ease that we are looking for. And may he grant us the dua and the prayer that we are searching for. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Islam, what makes it different? What distinguishes it? What are the finer points wherein we realize the gift that Allah has bestowed upon us? Point number one, the Quran itself. We all know the Quran is the only book, the only scripture that is undoubtedly uncontaminated to the degree that those who want to try and find fault in it, their findings and their attempts have always let them down more than anyone else. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu we are the ones who sent down this book, this Quran, this revelation. And we are the ones who will protect it. From the minute go, the book was protected. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had sent it down into the heart of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he had it off by heart and Allah made it easy for the book to be memorized. And therefore, it has been memorized by the generations those who have come from the very beginning to this day miraculously even those who do not understand the arabic language would be able to recite the book from cover to cover at times with absolutely no mistake at all i'm sure from amongst us seated here we would probably pick up quite a few who have memorized the quran cover to cover subhanallah any other book that is written by an individual if it is more than a few pages, that particular individual will not be able to memorize his own book and his own words. Amazing. And this is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You move from Nigeria to Texas in the United States to a corner of Australia to the most remote part of Indonesia to the Middle East to Russia down to the southern tip of Africa and the northernmost part of Europe, 
You will find people who have memorized the Quran cover to cover. As I say, a language sometimes that may not be immediately understood by the one who has memorized it. That is the beauty of the Quran. Pause there for a moment. Do you know that every single one of you have been used and have contributed towards the protection of this particular book? Every one of you. In what way? If I were to ask you, have you memorized the Quran? If you say no, your answer is wrong. The answer is yes, we have memorized portions of it. If I were to ask you how many of you do not know Surah Al-Fatiha, I don't think I would have a single hand being raised. That means you have memorized the Surah of the Quran. MashaAllah. You are also one of those who has been used contributing towards the protection of the book. And this is one of the reasons why when people say Muslims are foolish to be praying in a language they don't understand, they don't realize that they have lost the authenticity of their books to the degree that they themselves are disputing the authenticity of those books. Whereas with us, prayer is to supplicate. When it comes to salah, it is a set of actions and deeds, meaning words that are uttered and actions with certain intentions, with the benefit that Allah alone knows the depth of. One of the benefits is you will learn the language you will learn the words of the Almighty in the language they were revealed. Subhanallah. And this is why when the book is translated, you will always find on one side the Arabic written and on the other side the language that they are using to try and explain the words of the Almighty. The reason is the Arabic is the word of Allah. The other language on the side is just an attempt. An attempt by man to explain what he believes is the best meaning of those words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Unlike other books have, that have been lost, when the language of revelation was substituted by another language in order to try and explain it to people. If I were to ask you, how many of you have memorized Surah Al-Ikhlas? لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد. I'm sure every single one of us knows that off by heart. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. What a miracle! That is only one aspect of the miracle of the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has kept it such that in the opening verses of the second surah of that particular book, Allah says. Indeed, this book, no doubt in it. There is no doubt in it. The authenticity of this powerful book, Allahu Akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses it right at the beginning. And this is why when it comes to authenticity of scripture, nobody can debate with the Quran. Nobody can argue. So what they do, they say, how was it gathered? How did Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu anhu bring the words together and what happened at the time of Abu Bakr and how did it come down and how do we know that this particular book is the authentic book and so on. Subhanallah, it is the only version of the Quran. Does that not speak loud enough? There is no other version of the Quran. There might have been attempts by the enemy of Islam to try and come up with other versions which everybody who was Muslim knew that this is not a part of Islam and that was very short-lived it did not last long and it can never last long because the Almighty says we reveal the book and we will ensure that it is protected and this is why a person who makes an effort to memorize the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them so much many fold they have got blessings to the degree that the effects of those blessings shall be felt even by their family members May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he grant us the ability to make an effort to memorize. Now let's move on, not only the memorization of that book, but if we go further, the meanings are so deep and the meanings are so relevant that they apply to every one of us, either in terms of a lesson being derived or an instruction being issued or a prohibition being made clear or some point within history that we learn a lesson from. 
or the examples that are given so relevant or sometimes prophecies that are within the Quran that are so true and sometimes we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us deep knowledge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us of the secrets of the earth and the secrets of creation for definitely he is the creator and this is why he says سَنُرِيهِمْ آيَاتِنَا فِي الْآفَاقِ وَفِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَتَّى يَتَبَيَّنَ لَهُمْ أَنَّهُ الْحَقُّ We will show them signs in the horizons and signs within themselves. We will continue showing them signs until it is proven beyond any doubt whatsoever that this book is the truth. Subhanallah. So we have the movement of the sun and we have various aspects of creation. The issue of iron ore and steel, the creation of man, the various categories of creation, jinn kind and what they are all about. And we have every other detail that is mentioned in the Quran. Some we have already been able to scientifically prove and others if science is against them, we believe the Quran is correct and science will soon discover that that Quran is correct. Subhanallah. Look at this. What a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah speaks of the darkness in Surah An-Nur and that darkness. Amazing how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with such information. And this is why if you were to base the conclusions of your experiments in this world on the Quran, you will never be wrong. And if you were to contradict the Quran, you will always have findings thereafter that will negate your initial findings that were against what the Quran had come up with. Amazing. This is the book. There is another aspect that distinguishes the book. When it is recited, it soothes even the souls of the disbelievers. Allahu Akbar. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Maliki Yawmiddin Iyaka Na'budu Wa Iyaka Nasta'een Ihdina Al-Sirat Al-Mustaqim Al-Sirat Al-Lazeen An'amta Alayhim غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين. Did that not soothe you? سبحان الله. We are believers. Hair raising, isn't it? I read a whole surah. Hair raising. The disbelievers have confirmed from the time of Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam These words have a sweetness These words are beautiful These words are full of meaning These words are amazing They cannot be the word of mankind They are indeed revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allahu Akbar There is no beat in it There is no specific rhythm in it There is no poetry Per se, within the Quran, it cannot be described as a poem, nor can it be described as speech because it has a certain rhythmic method of recitation. It is something unique, something that nobody has come up with, can come up with, or shall come up with. The enrichment of the spirituality and the soul achieved solely by reciting or listening to the recitation of the Quran is something that I challenge the non-Muslims to experience. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. There are so many different ways of reciting the Quran. Some of them being much more soothing than others to some. Whilst those that may not have been so soothing to some will soothe others and Subhanallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the temperament of each human being. Some people say, I get a kick by listening to classical music, whilst the youth of today will tell you, I need a bit of heavy metal, and I need perhaps a little bit of jazz, or I need something of this nature and that, I need something a bit hard. 
believe me as a muslim all that can be thrown out of the window you have the quran and you have a collection of hundreds of reciters if not thousands across the globe you will definitely find at least 10 that will soothe you so much that the day you are feeling so low and down all you need to do is play that quran and amazingly it will not only pierce through your ears but it will go straight through your heart have you not tasted it i am looking at eyes that are telling me we have talk about it allahu akbar allahu akbar allahu akbar very big distinguishment read any other book from the scriptures of anyone else you will not achieve this allahu akbar allahu akbar what a book allah has kept in it the solution the cure for the diseases not only that are physical but even the diseases of the heart ya ayyuhan nas qad ja'atkum maw'izatun mir rabbikum wa shifaa'un lima fi sudur wa hudan wa rahmatun lil mu'minin o people O oh people, a great reminder has come to you from your Rabb, from your Maker, Subhanallah. A great reminder has come to you, a mawida, a warning, a reminder, something that will lead you towards goodness, that has come to you from your Maker, the one who nourishes you, the one who cherishes, provides for, the one who is in absolute control of every aspect of your existence, and in it lies the cure of that which your hearts may be suffering in terms of ailment the cure of the diseases of the heart spiritual disease as well as physical disease the quran allah says has come with and allah says in it there is guidance and there is mercy for who for those who believe so regarding the guidance and mercy you would need the eyes and heart of a believer in order to derive maximum benefit from this beautiful book of the Quran. That is the biggest point of distinguishing Islam, leaving the rest far behind. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May He make us from amongst those who realize the word of Allah, its value and its level and status and how gifted we are to have such a powerful word. May we not replace that with anything else, but rather may we be from amongst those who follow it and follow through whatever it actually teaches. We now need to move on. I could continue as to how the Quran is so powerful and I'm sure we will have different forums discussing this, but it's important for us to move to the next gift that distinguishes Islam, something known as the Sunnah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The sunnah is a term that has more than seven meanings. But I would like to say the entire lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from the beginning all the way to the end. Every aspect of his life has been recorded in the tiniest and finest of detail in a manner that nobody else's life has ever been recorded or shall ever be recorded. Do you know that? If you hear, for example, the words of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or you hear a description of what his hands felt like, or what his sweat smelt like, you will not hear it without the mention being made of the chain of narrators, and without knowing exactly where it came from. وَعَنْ أَنَسْ ibn مَالِكٍ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْ أَنَسْ ibn Malik. May peace be upon him, may Allah be pleased upon him, has stated. So who is Anas? You will find out by the click of a button on your Android device. Do you know that? And who is his father Malik? You will find out with another click. And whether Anas and Malik are actually connected in reality, you will find out that as well. How long he spent with the messenger? What gives him the right to utter these words that I heard the messenger? All that you will find out. Subhanallah. He says, Khadimtu Rasulallah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ashra sinin. 
I served the messenger, may peace be upon him, for 10 years. That means at the time he uttered these words, he had served the messenger for 10 years. He says, فَمَا قَالَ لِيَ أُفٍ قَطُّ وَمَا قَالَ لِشَيْءٍ صَنَعْتُهُ لِمَا صَنَعْتَهُ Subhanallah. He says, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never ever in 10 years, myself being a servant of his, did he once make a statement that was derogatory to me or even that which gave the slightest feeling of his disapproval of what I have done. He did not say uf, and uf is an Arabic term for, for example, a frown with a sound. What we would do very readily to our parents, yet the Quran says, Allah says regarding your parents and mine, they gain old age when they get to the stage. Be careful, never ever utter to either one of them, the term oof, if I could say it in the English language, it would probably be, ah, that's the term, ah. Sometimes the T-S-E sound that comes out of our mouths. Can I try it again? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So the messenger did not say that or anywhere near that to Anas ibn Malik in 10 years. And he goes further and says, he never ever told me regarding something I did. Why did you do this? He corrected it himself with a smile. And subhanAllah, there are so many examples. Why I'm making mention of this is, look, his character is recorded. The blink of his eyelid is recorded. The frowning of his eyebrow is recorded, subhanAllah. The way he walked is recorded. He says, the same Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu an, he says, I have never felt or touched any silk or anything soft in terms of material, softer than the hands of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And I have never ever smelt a scent, no musk, no amber, more blessed in fragrance or more attractive in fragrance than the sweat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah. And then, how did it get from Anas bin Malik to me? This is just an example of one narration, one hadith. But there is the same for every single narration. Every single narration has a chain of narrators. The lives of every single narrator discussed in the greatest possible depth with the comments of those whom they lived with, recorded very well and detailed in thousands of volumes that you will find even in this university to a certain extent. And nowadays, like I say, you just need a little tablet or you need, for example, I don't mean a pill, you know, I'm surprised iPhone, you know, they've come up with tablets. They haven't yet said we've come up with a pill. I wonder why. Maybe the women would get excited. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. My brothers and sisters, you can pick that tablet up, you can pick up your devices and you can search and you will find the statements. You will find the entire chain of narrators and you will find where people have tried to lie. But they are caught. How are they caught? Because the man says, I heard from so and so. Hang on, he died before you were born. How could you have heard from him? Did his soul come and chat with you? If that's the case, keep it that way. We won't accept that statement from you. Or they say, I heard from so-and-so, but hang on, you lived in Baghdad and you've never shifted out. And he lived in Damascus and he did not shift out. How you met, we have an issue with, so therefore we will discount your statement. Amazing. Do you know anyone's life that is discussed in that detail? from any one of the followers of any other faith, this is what distinguishes Islam. So now they find fault. There are people from amongst us who are conned into believing that the sunnah means nothing. 
We only believe in the Quran and there is nothing remaining. So we will show you a narration of the prophecies of the same messenger saying that I warn you about people who will come later on. They will hold the Quran and they will say this is the only revelation and this is enough. And they will discard and throw away the entire lifestyle that I have led. Subhanallah. The Quran itself leads you to the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِبْكُمُ اللَّهُ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if you claim to love Allah, then follow me. How do you follow him? Allah says, follow me. Meaning, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will love you and he will forgive your sins for indeed. He is most forgiving, most merciful. Look at what Allah says thereafter. لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةٌ حَسَنَةٌ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهِ لِمَنْ كَانَ يَرْجُ اللَّهَ وَالْيَوْمَ الْآخِرَ وَذَكَرَ اللَّهَ كَثِيرًا Indeed, there is a beautiful example to be emulated in the entire life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. His lifestyle, the do's and don'ts, his utterances, whatever he did, whatever he uttered, whatever he instructed, whatever he prohibited. Allah says, those who believe in Allah, looking forward to the last day, the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them, there is definitely a very, very blessed example to be emulated and to be followed. Subhanallah. And this is why Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam being the best of humankind, the best of creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made him say things and do things, very few things, whereby he was then admonished by Allah in the Quran. Listen to this carefully as to why he did what he did. Because part of a perfect example would be to show me and you how to react to correction even if we feel we are perfect. We are not. He was. Subhanallah. Part of being a perfect example is to show how to react to correction. Subhanallah. When corrected, no matter how intelligent you might be, when your children have watched you being corrected by someone and acknowledging it and changing your life because of that they will change their lives when they are corrected as well because they have seen you as a role model as an automated role model from allah allah has made you an automatic role model for your children it's up to you to develop that or to discard it a parent is a role model automatically for the child but it's up to them to develop that or to discard it so this is why when you have been corrected and you've responded in the correct way like allah says to him why did you frown allahu akbar beautiful verses of the quran allah says Regarding the frowning of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where there was a blind man in front of him, Abdullah ibn Umm Maktoum. One might say, why did that happen? Wasn't he perfect? Well, it's part of perfection, isn't it? Part of perfection. Because he was sent as a lesson for me and you, as an example for me and you, as a guide for me and you. It would be wrong for us to have said, how should I react to correction? When I don't know from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is the perfect example, how to react to it. So Allah says, here's the example. We will give you more than one example. Subhanallah. Amazing. That is the life distinguished completely. Another very beautiful point from the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which we can consider point number three. The messenger never ever called never ever called for anyone to worship him never ever not once 
قل إنما أنا بشر مثلكم يوحى إلي الله says tell them I am a human being just like you revelation comes to me so the distinguishing factor is made clear but you don't worship me you worship my maker and yours amazing this is why it is important for us to realize and recognize the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Sometimes we get excited with those who are perhaps spiritual. We might see a scholar whom we look up to and suddenly we begin to prostrate to him. No, if he allows it, he has allowed something the messenger would never have allowed and did not allow. And if we do it, we are doing something that the messenger whom we claim to be following has never done and would never allow. How then would we be distinguishing Islam when we are following the trends and traits of people of other faiths who begin to bow and bend and kiss the feet of those who are spiritual mortals whereas the one who came as the highest of creation never ever allowed any of his companions who are far higher than myself and yourselves to do anything of that nature. So don't be fooled. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all. And this is why in Islam, we distinguish between respect and worship, acknowledging that there is a very fine line between the two should not be crossed. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and may he make us from those who understand and realize. Very interesting point of distinguishing. Islam is the link that Islam has taught between the maker and the one whom he has made, the creator and the created. You are a creature of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are a human being, mashallah. Allah has taught you what to do. When you do something wrong, you repent to him alone. That is a distinguishing factor. Today, if you were to ask those who are attracted to Islam, what has attracted them to Islam? You will hear so many answers. But one of the answers that are the more common, the most common, I would say, the concept of Godhood in Islam. They will tell you, I've been through people when I had to go to someone and confess my sin, or when I had to go and do something in order to be forgiven, or when I had to go and engage in something I did not understand at all. And Islam says, it's between you and your maker. You cry and weep to your Allah. And you are forgiven completely, whether it is in the darkness of the night or the brightest moment of the day, you are forgiven. Totally. All you need, my brothers, my sisters, we have every reason to smile because all we need to become pure is to admit our guilt, to admit our sin, to regret it, to ask the Almighty to forgive and to promise not to do it again. Once you do that with the Almighty, you are forgiven completely and totally. Subhanallah. Look at this. That is the power of Islam. Does your family need to know that you sinned? The answer is no. Does the sheikh in the masjid need to know you sinned? The answer is no. And this is why the issue of an imam in the front, we choose someone who can recite correctly and who has a decent reputation from amongst us. And we are allowed to be led by a large number who qualify for that particular post. Subhanallah. But it does not mean that we have worshipped that Imam or we have used him as a medium to get to Allah. No, we have a direct link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not feel too dirty to call out to your maker because that is the devil making you feel unclean when you are pure. Do not feel too low to call out to the Almighty. Do not feel like you have engaged in too many sins to be worthy of the mercy of your maker. That is the devil grabbing hold of you. Don't allow that. Never. You are never a right off. Not at all. There is always mercy. And do you know, you need to call out to your maker alone. Subhanallah. Distinguishing point of Islam. Another very, very interesting point. When we engage in what we term as salah five times a day certain type of prayer in a specific language 
which is different from the supplication which can be in any language. Supplication is a dua. That can be translated as prayer as well and that can be in any language. But when it comes to the salah, it is in a specific language. Do you know what you are doing? Subhanallah, you are putting your head down on the ground for who? Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. Glory be, praise be to my Rabb. What is the meaning of Rabb? The one who made me. Allahu Akbar. The one who made me. My head is on the ground for you, O oh my maker, O oh my nourisher, O oh my provider, O oh you who is in control of my existence. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Your head is on the ground for whom? Not for Moses, not for Jesus, not for Muhammad, not for Aaron, not for David, not for Solomon, not for Abraham, not for Adam. May peace be upon them all. We respect them. We have raised them to the level they belong to. But we do not engage in worship. We do not engage in worship for them. The worship is for Allah alone. This is why the Prophet Abraham makes it loud and clear. And the statement is repeated for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. قُلْ إِنَّ صَلَاتِي وَنُسُكِي وَمَحْيَايَ وَمَمَاتِي لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَبِذَلِكَ أُمِرْتُ وَأَنَا أَوَّلُ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Say that my prayer belongs to Allah. My sacrifice belongs to Allah. My life belongs to Allah. My death belongs to Allah. The one who created entire creation, the Lord of the worlds, the one who made me. My life belongs to him, my death belongs to him. My worship belongs to him alone, my sacrifice belongs to him alone. That is Islam. Subhanallah, that is Islam. What a distinguishing point. This is why I say, People are turning to Islam by the purity of Islam. Yet shaitan comes to the Muslims to create impurities within what they had that was pure. Allahu Akbar. We need to constantly be in touch with the devil's plan and make sure that we know how to counter plan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Really. If you do not know the roads that evil can attack you from, you may be attacked. If you do not know what your enemy is planning, you may be losers of that particular battle. But when you know and you've understood, this is why Allah explains the devil, who he is, what the problem was. Why is he jealous of you? Why does he hate you so much? What is he trying to do? All this is explained in the revelation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. What a beautiful point. Then we have the detailed rules and regulations of every aspect of my life. That is Islam. We say it is more a way of life than a religion. Islam is more a way of life than a religion because today we are seated here, mashallah. Some are wearing yellow, some are wearing green, some are wearing pink, some are wearing orange. Some are wearing purple, some are wearing blue, brother, with white writing. I'll remember that as well. Some, mashallah, are wearing stripes, some are wearing dots, some are wearing this color and that color. We are all Muslimin, and every one of us is governed by a framework. Subhanallah. I don't see any nudity here. I don't see anything prohibited here. So we are all engaged in something that we know is within the limits of what the Almighty has taught us. How beautiful that is. He did not say Muslims should wear blue. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Imagine if that was the case, there would be a shortage of blue. Maybe the sky would have to change color. <laughs> Imagine. Sorry, I just realized I'm putting on blue. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> I only picked that up after I said it. Don't worry. And you have to believe me. The point being raised is Allah says enjoy the colors of the world. We may prohibit upon you certain aspects or certain tints and so on depending on your gender and what have you. 
But you can enjoy what the world has to offer within the limits that we have set. Amazing. Amazing. Subhanallah. The same would apply. Today people have motor vehicles. They have, mashallah, helicopters. They have aircraft. We have so many different types of transport. We have so much in terms of shoes. Now you have shoes with little wheels on that move electrically. No more. When I was small, you know, we used to push them and move and mashallah, skate, so to speak. But no, today, electric. You have a little, uh, what they call a zooter scooter. That zooter scooter is no longer manual. You just press a button and it moves. So someone might say, bid'ah, haram. Relax. <laughs> Take it easy. That is not an act of worship that is direct. If it was a direct act of worship, the statement would be correct and valid. Any direct act of worship that was not taught or done, we stay away from. But this is just a means. It's something within what Allah has allowed. So inshallah, you use the Zuta scooter and get your children to also enjoy it and go out jet skiing in Penang. And don't worry, call me and I'll join you as well. <laughs> Notice I said Penang because I've been to Langkawi already. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, what a beautiful country. Look at what we have, the infrastructure. Look at the lights, look at the technology. Make use of it. This is Islam. Islam did not prohibit the beauty of the world except a certain list. And this is why we believe al-aslu fil ashya'i al-ibaha. All items originally, they are permissible except the list that Allah has made prohibited. And all acts of worship are prohibited except the list which has been taught to us. There we are. Acts of worship prohibited except what we've been taught. And everything else permissible except what we have been told is not. Amazing laws. This came from Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Did you know that? Beautiful. So if someone says, am I allowed to use a microphone or am I allowed to, for example, uh, use this mushaf wherein it is written with black ink, for example, you will have to ask the question, is it prohibited in Islam? If there is something saying it is prohibited, we will have to stay away from it. If there is nothing until we find some form of prohibition, we will not be able to say this is prohibited. Amazing. You have a pen, write with it. Prohibited? The answer is no. But there, at that time, they had different types of pens. So Allah did not prohibit it. That's the beauty of Islam. It has laws that govern the life of mankind and jinn kind right up to the end of time. This is why if you take a look at a beautiful hadith which I really love because it really has in it a powerful message where Aisha radiallahu anha is explaining in the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu and this narration is reported by various other companions as well regarding the various aspects that can be given to any one of us in terms of the beauty of this world the blessing of this world if you have them you have the goodness of this world from amongst them what is mentioned is al markabul murih do you know what that means Al markab, a conveyance. Al murih, comfortable conveyance, is a sign of happiness or success in this world. Sign of success. Why didn't he say a camel like mine? Because his words are eternal. That's why. He says a comfortable conveyance. At one stage, it was just a trishaw. They call it in India rickshaw. If you were to ride in one of those, I think now it becomes too bumpy for your back. You will have what they call in Malaysia a slit dis. Allahu Akbar. I don't know if you picked that up. I tried to get the accent right. You will have a slit disc. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because you're not used to that. Not at all. And then suddenly, without going to Egypt, you will be visiting a chiropractor. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Why? Because of that conveyance. But there was a time when they considered it the most comfortable. It was still in the hadith. Because the hadith says comfortable conveyance. Allahu Akbar. Look at how Islam is distinguished. It has wording that will last right up to the end of time. There will come a time when a Lexus means nothing. There will be another type of a Tata. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. 
MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. Really, my brothers and sisters, what powerful wording. He could have easily said, I've got the best horse here. So anyone who has a horse like mine, sign of success, sign of happiness in the dunya and so on and so forth. No comfortable conveyance. Then he says, al baytul a spacious home. At that time, a spacious home was a room. One corner they had a little bit of a stove or maybe a few logs trying to cook. The other corner they might have prayed and the one corner they uh, perhaps entertained guests and ate and the other corner is where they slept. I hope that was four corners. Yes, inshallah. I spoke about da'wah corner a few moments ago and I said, brother, you now have many branches, more than four. He says, all the corners of the world. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and grant us ease and may he make us benefit from that which is inshallah available to us brothers and sisters look at the wording there was a time when our parents were so excited with a house that had two rooms do you know the toilets if i can use that term may allah bless us all and protect us and grant us good health were far away from the house you had to walk a distance up to now in the rural areas of most of the parts of the globe they have the same system where you have your room and further away, there is a common toilet that everybody would use and perhaps a bathroom. Nowadays, do you know what it's called? En suite. And Cadbury's upset that they don't call it en chocolate. MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the best. May Allah open our doors. Really, en suite. I sit here, I have something known as not bed and breakfast, but breakfast in bed. Have you seen that? We are so spoiled and thereafter the toilet is right next door and thereafter the bathroom is right there. Everything is so close and then I have his and hers, two basins, mashallah. So whilst I am brushing, she can brush. I don't need to fight anymore. <laughs> Subhanallah. I went into a home very recently and I saw three. I said, Subhanallah, there are three. He said, no, my son, my son. I said, oh, Subhanallah, your son, do you realize after a year or two, he won't be able to use this with you because it is unsweet? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, the hadith says, a, com a spacious home because what they considered spacious at that time today would be impossible for some of us to live in. Do you know that? Impossible. Some people have a home where they have a room for guests that are not even going to come to their house. Seriously, what is this? It's a guest wing. And you see, mashallah, there is just a maid employed there to do what? Those cobwebs and spider webs and so on. They just, you know, every day pat them down and try and flick them off and so on. Subhanallah, that's my home because every home now has a guest wing. Subhanallah, I need to have one as well. It's become something. So look at the power of the wording of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's words. Allah says, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَىٰ إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَىٰ He does not utter out of his whims and fancies or desires that from his own accord. No, it is revelation revealed, inspired to him. His wording also sacred. Sacred wording. Then he makes mention of something else. He says, Al Mar'atu Saliha. He says, A good wife is also a sign of the success of this world. What you've had in the world, subhanAllah, the happiness of this dunya. You have a good, a pious wife. Why didn't he say to have someone similar to Khadija, to have someone similar to Aisha? To have someone similar to Safiya. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon all of them. May Allah be pleased with them and with us as well. Because what is considered pious today, do you know? With the previous generations, may have been considered far away from deen. Think about what I've just said. What I've just said. What we consider good, pious. And what we consider sometimes people who are devoted, compare their devotion with the devotion of those of aforetime. Believe me, that comparison, subhanallah, will wake us up. So this is why, for as long as it is someone who is on a slightly higher level than you are, perhaps, according to what you feel, they will be 
an asset for you in your life. Subhanallah. The point being raised here, I've given you one example of the power of the wording of the sunnah that distinguishes Islam from others. The wording is powerful like that. There are hundreds of thousands of words that have been uttered by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if not millions of them. And all of them are blessed words which require lots and lots of explanation and understanding and detailed education. There are departments and faculties of hadith studying the words of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his life. Throughout the globe, in most countries, they have that. So much so that universities that are otherwise non-Muslim universities have Islamic studies as an option. Have you seen that? Subhanallah. Where have you ever seen an Islamic university that has Christian studies or Jewish studies as an option to graduate by? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us an understanding. Still, we have ourselves. We don't know where to head sometimes when we want to learn about the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to understand the gift that we have. Another distinguishing factor, Islam has set a limit to certain terminologies that today's world has removed the limit from. So Allah says, لَقَدْ خَلَقُنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي أَحْسَنِ تَقْوِيمٍ ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَاهُ أَسْفَلَ سَافِلِينَ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Amazing. We have created man in the best of postures. And then we dropped him to the lowest of the low, except he who believes and does good deeds. So you believe and do good deeds, you will be able to distinguish. You will be able to be distinguished. And you will be able to be a person who enjoys your temporary moments in this particular life, understanding where you have come from, where you are and where you are heading. Amazing. Why do we say this? Take a look at the term freedom today. The term freedom, the world has used it to reduce people to do things that even animals have never considered. You thought about it? I say that again. The term freedom has been used in order to do people of today to do things that even animals have never considered out of nature never ever I'm sure from amongst them there are doctors amongst the animals I'm sure from amongst them there are people who know what they oh sorry not people I'm saying people here I'm sure from amongst the animals there are some who help the others they are Allah creates systems do you ever see anyone engaging in behavior that today's world sometimes considers a part of your freedom. Well, from your freedom, you choose to be a Muslim. That means out of your free will, you have chosen to lay certain rules and regulations on your shoulders that you shall abide by. So you freely chose not to be that free. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. You freely chose to put rules on your shoulders. It's like you choosing to go to a college that has a lot of rules. They tell you the best college. You pay 50,000 ringgits a month. And you know what? It's the most elite. And it will really make you into a person who has the highest level of respect in society. What will you do? Not only will you pay the 50,000 if you can afford it, but you will be a person who definitely abides by the rules and regulations of that college willingly. Whereas you had the freedom not to go to that college. So you chose to be a Muslim. You've chosen to enter a college that has rules and regulations. Do you know what? Instead of you paying 50,000, it will pay you much more than 500 million ringgits a month. Yesterday I said 50 billion. See, today we downgraded. Why? Subhanallah. Make it a little bit interesting for people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant our currency strength. No use saying 50,000 ringgits by tomorrow morning, it's equivalent to 45,000. Allah protect us. So why we say this? It is Islam. It has rules governing how you will lead your life. And there is a guarantee that when you follow all the rules and regulations or as much as you can of Islam, there is a guarantee that you will find peace and comfort and you will understand your purpose of existence and you will look forward to the meeting with your maker. Guarantee. 
because you understand so you have a woman in Islam she has been placed exactly on the level that her maker wanted her to be placed we cannot say she is lower we cannot say she is higher we cannot say she is equivalent because in certain aspects she is higher in certain aspects a male may be raised higher and in certain aspects we are completely equal this is Allah and his plan physically emotionally and so on Allah has created us with specific specifications and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created a specialized creatures and he knows exactly where they are so if you try to raise a man above his exact status given by Allah you will find discomfort lack of contentment you will find loss of spiritual appetite and you will lose perhaps part of your link with your maker the same applies if you do that to a woman and the same applies if you do that to anyone for that matter subhanallah this is the religion Allah has placed you on a specific spot I respect you because Allah has made you such that, and me such that I owe you respect and so do you subhanallah may Allah bless us and this is why one of the greatest misunderstandings of today and we notice sometimes very sadly that some Muslims begin to peddle this type of attitude and understanding which is incorrect believing that a non-Muslim does not deserve to live wow my forefathers somewhere down the line were probably non-muslim and if that was the attitude i wonder where i would be today i wonder where i would be today is that your attitude if that's the case you have not understood the message of the messenger may peace be upon him salawatu rabbi wa salamuhu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in subhanallah the companions were all mushriks not even people of the book the bulk of them were mushrikeen they used to worship sticks and stones they used to worship people they used to worship you know the so many different aspects of existence and what happened the messenger peace be upon him continued trying with them so there are rules and regulations you need to understand this is what distinguishes islam to display this faith allahu akbar allah says Kuntum khayra um indeed you are the best of nations that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent forth for mankind you need to have mankind at heart in the sense that you need to call out to people enjoining that which is good and prohibiting that which is evil start with yourself and continue with the circles around you until you are an asset to humanity at large this is why the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sent as a mercy <laughs> We have not sent you except as a means of mercy for the worlds, for the various creatures, not only mankind or jinn kind, but all others. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent as a means of mercy. What was that? To remove them from darkness to the light in the case of mankind and jinn kind and to lay down the rights of the animals and the creatures, the trees and the plants, the ecosystem and everything else. The rights that water has over you. Allahu Akbar. When I said that once people looked at me, you mean water has a right over me? But water is not a human. Water is not a jinn. Water is not an animal. Water has a right over you. Where did how you want your usage of that water shall be governed by rules and regulations. Allahu Akbar. To contaminate the ocean is definitely something that is a grave sin in Islam because there are others who need to benefit from it and there will be the marine life that you have disturbed as a Muslim there are rules governing the rights of that marine life in the depth of the ocean that you dare tamper with intentionally may Allah protect us today we have people who talk about 
depositing toxic wastes in the oceans. Islam says prohibited. You say, where does it come from? Because the fish have a right. The water, what gives you the right to go out and contaminate it? Who told you you can dump out in the ocean? Allahu Akbar. So much so that Islam is distinguished as well by the code of diet or the dietary restrictions that Allah has laid. Amazing. Anything that is prohibited for you to consume is harmful not only to your health but to your spirituality. People ask, well, if Allah didn't want you to eat the pig, why did he make it? Because he wanted you not to eat it. That's why he made it. Simple answer. But why would he make it? The same reason he made snakes and other things, other creatures and told you not to eat them. If Allah tells you, I will make certain things to test you by telling you, you may eat it under certain conditions. And I will make certain things and I will tell you, no matter what the condition, you will not eat it unless obviously you're about to die and there's nothing but that. And I don't think that would happen to us in a rush on this globe at the moment. May Allah protect us from that. But if Allah tests you addition, he will test you sub subtraction as well. I've always said when you enter a mathematics exam, you don't only find 1 plus 1, 2 plus 3, 5 plus 8, 6 plus 7. That's boring. Tell me 8 minus 5. At least I can give you, you can give me an opportunity to say 3. Allahu Akbar. You test me minus, you test me plus. And as I grow a little bit older in my educational field, you will test me division and multiplication. Then you come up with laws of algebra and you test me if I can apply them or not. Wow, amazing. As Muslimin, we have the same. You have plus and minus, you have multiplication, division. Allah did not say, okay, I've created everything. There's nothing that I will tell you not to consume. If you look at Adam and Eve or Hawa, may peace be upon them. Allah created them and placed them in a certain place. What we would have termed heaven, whether it was the heaven we are going to return to or a specific heaven that was specially created to test them, only Allah knows. But what happened there? He said, لا تقرب هذه الشجرة do not get close to this one tree. Everything else you can do. So Allah says, do not get close to this pig. Allahu Akbar. The, this pork, don't eat it. I don't want. What are the reasons? Whatever the reasons. You may find, you may not find. There are medical reasons. There are spiritual reasons. The Christians are not supposed to be eating pork. The Jews are not supposed to be eating pork. If they have contaminated and changed their faith, then it is up to them to rectify it. But they are not supposed to buy their original scriptures. That's your test. So you are only supposed to eat something that is slaughtered in a specific way. Why? Allah wants his name to be invoked so that spiritually it is good for you. Secondly, and when we say spiritually it is good for you, we would like to include in that, that you have taken life away that Allah had given with the permission of the Almighty, the giver of that life. Secondly, disease lies within the blood. It should be drained completely. Thirdly, the taking away of that life should happen in the most humane way, which is the Islamic method of sacrifice. Say what you want. That is the way. Allahu Akbar. May Allah bless us. Recently, there are discoveries. There are researchers and experiments showing that the most humane method is not to stun the animal because stunning confuses it completely and causes lots of pain and lots of punishing of that particular animal. The life takes much longer to come out from a stunned animal than that which is not. Ask the Jewish. They do not eat animals that are stunned at all. Nobody makes a noise. So why is it that with Muslimin people start making a noise? I told you when I started that if Allah has said something and science discovers something else, I swear by the one who has raised the skies without pillars that there will come a day when either science will find that it was wrong or the Quran will be proven to be right. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us those who are steadfast. Understand the value of the word. It's not mine nor yours. It is the word of the creator, the one who made absolutely everything. Subhanallah. This is Islam. This is only a tip of the iceberg of what distinguishes the beautiful faith that you and I have been chosen to be followers of. And this is why I end 
by making mention of something very strong, very strong. My brothers and sisters, I have said this many times and I always repeat it when someone reverts to Islam. I always say, Islam is a knowledge-based religion. The more you know about it, the more you will love it, the closer you will be to your maker, the more you will understand and the more you will love to adopt its rules and regulations. The less you know, the further you will drift. Just remember that. So all of us here, mashallah, let us make a pledge that we will learn as much as we can about this faith. Do not rest until the day that you arrive in your grave. Yesterday they asked me, have you rested? I said, you know, my clock, my computer is turned down. Why? I can't sleep at night. Six hour difference between my country and here. Jet lag and everything else. No, not excuses, excuses. I've still, mashallah, come to every lecture that was registered and recorded. But what is it? I told him, no, rest. You want me to rest? The true rest will happen in the grave. Allahu Akbar. That's where you rest. They say, rest in peace. I don't know if I told you in Zimbabwe, at one stage we had 3,000 deaths a week due to the disease AIDS. May Allah cure us all, protect us all from any diseases we may have. So there was a discussion to bury people standing because they say we're losing space here. So I remember one man making mention of, and I was there at that symposium or that gathering that was discussing this. He says, we can't do that. We cannot do that. What's the reason? Because how will we say rest in peace? We will have to say SIP, stand in peace. <laughs> People will be standing in peace. Sometimes peace is spelled P-I-E-C-E -E instead of P-E-A-C-E. -E. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make us into pieces, but rather may He make us those who are full of peace. So this is what I say, knowledge based. Are you ready to learn? Are you ready to sacrifice and struggle? To learn more and more until the day you meet Allah in a happy condition. Your mode, happy mode. MashaAllah. Why? I tried every day to learn a portion, to learn a little bit. I tried my best within my own capacity to put into practice whatever I could. And subhanAllah, I was interested and bothered about my life. And I tried my best to help others as much as I could within the limits or within whatever capacity Allah has given me. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless myself and yourselves and may He bless us all. Really, it has been a very good few days in this beautiful country of Malaysia and in this particular city of food, mashallah. As I said, KUL does not only stand for Kuala Lumpur, but it also stands for Kul in the Arabic language. It means eat. So we will eat more and more, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us healthy food and may he make us from those who realize and understand until we meet again sometime we say sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina muhammad subhanallahi wa bihamdih subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik